Welcome back to the channel guys, we're back in KL and today I wanted to make a video about chipping and I think one of the biggest issues that most golfers face with chipping is the struggle to make consistent contact with the golf ball and therefore to have good distance control when it comes to chipping because if you're thinning your shots or you're alternating between thinning, hitting solid and chunking the ball there's no way you're going to be able to judge how far the ball is going to carry or roll um, so I think you're going to have a lot of issues when it comes to distance control with chipping so today I wanted to just give you guys some tips and how I personally feel is the best way to make sure that you consistently get good contact when you're chipping. Okay, so we're going to start right from the setup and I know you can't see where my ball is going but if you actually control this area, which is you chipping the ball, it's going to control that area, which is the result. So we just need to focus on this part, which is being able to make solid contact with the ball. So the first thing that I want you guys to do is to actually narrow your stance a lot. So I'm going to chip basically with my feet this close to each other. And the reason why was because in the last video that I made about chipping technique, one of the things that I said is that you need to use your core to chip rather than using your hands or your legs or whatever it is to chip, you're going to use your core. And that's how I feel the rotation. And one of the reasons why we are putting our feet together is because usually what happens is, for instance, if somebody comes up to me and say, um, how do I chip better? And I tell them to use their core. What I tend to see is a lot of this, which is a lot of body movement, or a lot of this, where they try to keep their core and then they end up doing this, which is like their head is behind and they're just trying to make sure they hit the ball. So either, either method is not really going to help you with good contact, but when you have your feet really close together, it's going to be very hard for you to sway, which is a common technique that people do as well when they have issues swaying in a full swing. What they do is they basically narrow their stance so that when your feet are this small, it's, very, it's going to be very hard for you to, to sway off the, off the ball. So what we're going to do is basically just swing like this. And when you do this drill, just standing like this with your feet really close to each other, I feel like you should be able to feel your core because you should not be just using your hands or trying to use too much body. Just use your core. And an easy way to think about this as well is the butt of your club should be facing your core. So you're just using your core to rotate and turn. And just get this feel until you're comfortable. And then try to chip the ball and see what kind of contact you get. So you should be able to hit it pretty solidly. Maybe you're not on the first time. It might feel a little bit odd to you, especially if you're, you're someone who tends to sway off a lot or just use a lot of hands or tend to dig into the ground. And in terms of setup as well, what we're going to do is we're actually going to put this somewhere in the middle of our stance. So obviously we don't have a lot of room right now. Our, our feet are almost touching. So we're just going to keep this somewhere where we're within the stance. So we're not going to be like this or like this. We're just going to keep this pretty simple, pretty neutral. What we're trying to do first is to be able to get solid contact with the ball. So first is close enough feet, ball within the stance. And finally, the next thing that we're going to do with in terms of setup is going to be making sure that our weight is more predominantly on the left foot. So if you're someone who tends to put it behind, it's going to feel like you're really, you just want to, exaggerate it for the moment it's probably going to feel close to a 70 percent on your left foot and 30 percent on your back foot so the three things that you want to do in terms of setup is make sure that you have a small stance your ball is within your stance the width of your stance and your weight is forward and if you can look there All three of my chip shots basically end up around the same distance. So the second and third tip are going to go kind of hand in hand. The second tip is going to be to switch out your wedge for a lower lofted wedge. And I know a lot of people like don't really like to hit those chip and runs, but if you're not able to make solid contact with a regular basic chipping shot, it's going to be very difficult for you to do any other kind of chip shots. So we're going to start off with the basic first, make sure that you get consistently good contact, and then you can move on to the fancier shots. Okay, so now that we've switched out to a lower lofted wedge, one of the reasons why I want you to do this is because I want you to be able to take a smaller swing. I think it starts to get harder to use your core the bigger your swing is. So we're just going to start off with a very 
low lofted wedge so we don't have to take too big of a swing. This is a 46 degree wedge. So I'm doing the exact same thing, just trying to get good contact with the ball. You can do this a few times. Like I said, it's going, obviously going to take some getting used to depending on how your chipping is right now. If you are struggling with your chipping pretty badly, this is probably going to feel pretty different. And one of the reasons why you should start off with using a lower lofted wedge as well is because you have a bigger room for error. You don't have to always hit perfect contact in order to get a decent result. All right, so the third tip that we want to implement today in order to get more consistently good contact with your chipping is to have no acceleration in your chipping technique. So what does acceleration mean? Normally in a full swing, when you're coming down, that's when you want to accelerate. With something like chipping, we're never looking at club speed, ball speed. It's a lot more about finesse. So we don't want to see any sort of acceleration in the swing one of the things that i see a lot of people tend to do which is probably one of the worst things that you can do for your chipping is take a very short backswing and then because they know it's not going to get there they accelerate through the swing to try to get the ball there and what this also tends to mean is that you're probably using your hands to accelerate because i mean i don't see any other way that you could accelerate down without using your hands and like we said we don't really want to use our hands in chipping so one of the things that we want to see is a very smooth swing and one of the ways to do that is to have no acceleration in your chipping. And I also think this is one of the reasons why people always tend to look at pros chipping and say that it looks really smooth. It's because there is no acceleration in the chipping stroke. And like I said just now, the reason why the second and the third tip kind of goes hand in hand is because if you need to hit a longer chip, you can always just use a lower lofted club. So we should not be seeing any sort of acceleration in the chipping stroke because it will naturally already accelerate. So you don't have to try to accelerate on the way down. We also want to have as little moving parts as possible when we're chipping. So when you're using your hands to accelerate, that's something that you can't really control and it's going to affect your consistency in terms of distance control. So you can see I'm using the same club, the 46 degree, as I used to chip to that short chip just now and this long chip. And all I'm doing is basically taking a longer backstroke. So it's kind of raining right now, so it's a bit difficult for me to physically show you guys. Um, but another reason why I said like no acceleration in the chipping is because I think that... So for instance, let's say, I don't know how what the club speed or a ball speed is for a chip shot. But let's say it's 30 miles per hour. Let's say you can consistently not accelerate and just use rotation to consistently chip at 30 miles per hour. From there, you can just increase your the length of your backswing and your forward swing in order to chip further. And obviously, then you can change club space on that and etc. etc. So that will give you a good base for how far a chip will carry and run out. And from there, you can always build your short game. So if you have varying club speeds so if you chip one chip at 30 miles per hour and one at 50 miles per hour having being able to judge distance based on how far your club is is going to be purely based off feel so if you're already struggling with chipping chances are your feel in your chipping is not great so this is a good basis for which you can start your chipping practice like i said just now this is not the only way to chip there's obviously going to be instances where you're going to need to use wrist where you're going to need to accelerate but this is for the basic chip and like i said if you cannot make consistent contact with the chip for a regular chip shot it's going to be very difficult to do any other kind of chip shot so you need to be able to master this chip shot before you try the fancy ones
that slope didn't help but here you can see so for the first chip we went somewhere here and then it's about equal distance apart there is a huge slope there so that wasn't probably the best place to show this distance control chip you can see they're about an equal distance apart because swinging it at the same club speed all I had to do was take a longer backswing and long swing a uh, follow through swing wow well, long swing <laughs> backswing and follow through swing and then it created its own distance gap based on how long I took the backswing and the follow through swing so I hope that that's a good basis for those of y'all who are really struggling with your chipping, giving you guys some kind of way to start improving your chipping and hopefully start giving you guys closer and easier up and downs throughout your round. So if you guys like that video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you guys try these tips, let me know how it goes and let me know what else you want to see here on Golf with Jen.